Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Lam Al Muhammad and I'm going to represent my group and present about our presentation, Solo Female Travelers. We were supposed to interview and send some questionnaires to some solo female travelers who travel to other places uh, alone. So we were supposed to send them some questionnaires that our lecturer had prepared and also interview them. So we have put together this presentation to showcase you our results and tell you what basically were their motivations, um, their experiences and a little bit about them. My group mates are Hamra, Paula, Nina, Chloe and Prachi. So let's begin. For a little introduction, the concept of female solo travelers is um, becoming very popular in the tourist in tourism industry as of today. Uh, as tourists, these women look for journeys that bring, um, let's say, more than one a trip from one place to the other. They choose to go alone in the pursuit of adventure, independence, and it's a really good feeling. A uh, really. Uh, a feeling that you would personally not know how to describe so they want to feel the independence and freedom uh, they don't necessarily travel alone because they have no other choice or because they have no one to travel with not because they are loners they they are driven by specific consciousness and motivation so they decide to do this it's not because they are lonely or alone they just want to enjoy it by themselves. So nowadays women are increasingly choosing to travel alone. It's becoming a trend, it's becoming a pattern. And uh, most of the people in the industry today, they already know it. The number of female travelers has been growing for the past decade. And so it has been uh, a growing trend in the industry. And if you want to be at the top of the industry, you would have to um, stay on top of the latest patterns latest travel patterns so we interviewed five solo female travelers uh, these are the profiles of female solo travelers that we interviewed and three of them we did a video interview and two of them we sent out questionnaires so the first girl was Melissa she's from France and she's 23 years old the next you can see from the picture is Nina she is from France and she is also 20 she's 24 years old I'm sorry then we have Sarah she's from the USA and she's 25 years old we have Annie she's from Finland and she's 31 years old and then we have the lovely Christine she's from Australia and she's 49 years old so we interviewed this lovely group of women and we asked them about their experiences on solo traveling so after we put together our research and um, did a summary of it, we found out that some of the main motivations were to get out of their comfort zone in order to develop a sense of autonomy, uh, individuality, and the sense and the challenge personal growth. So they wanted to push their boundaries, step outside of the box, and um, explore something new. The journey translates into the search for something much more valuable than relaxation and leisures. These group of women, they, they wanted to evaluate their own values and develop their identities and acquire knowledge that they did not have before. So another motivation is the importance of socialization for these tourists. These solo female travelers uh, they desire the ex escape of daily life, so they want to get away from their daily life, daily hustle, uh, daily grind. <laughs> they want to have some fun, they want to have a, let's say they want to escape from their daily life and they want to try something new. So the, sol this, the solo female travelers, they desire the escape of the daily life, they look for diverse cultural contexts to relate to, other than those which uh, they are really used to so each of them they're from a different background each of our interviewees they're from different backgrounds but they all agree that they wanted to travel in order to look for more diverse experiences finally and uh, in also a broader sense all these factors can be grouped together agreeing that a female solo uh, traveler seeks an adventure 
it's not because we're lonely, it's not because we don't have anyone to travel with, it's because we want an adventure, a memorable experience, and also to experience leisure alone. Some of the main expectations. So, we interviewed five, five girls, and all of them agreed that the lo- uh, they expected the locals to be very friendly and humble. Uh, almost, not almost, even most, uh, sorry, all of them. All of them said that they expected white sandy beaches which were not overcrowded. They also expected it to be easily accessible from one place to the other because the Philippines is several small islands drop together on the ocean so you have to travel from one island to the other and they expected it to be really easy and they want they expected great adventures they wanted breathtaking islands and they also expected there to be crystal clear water so all they heard about philippines what that was that um they had the philippines are a group of small beautiful islands with beautiful sandy beaches and crystal clear water so they wanted the beach to uh, moving on to the patterns of behavior there are three main patterns of behaviors the first one is opening up to meeting new people so all of them they agree that they're socially active while traveling alone and they respect other cultures and beliefs while making new friends so it, even if you travel there alone you'll meet other solo travelers and sometimes you'll make groups and you'll travel travel to other places together but you're a solo female traveler because you went there alone you got to experience it alone you met new people while you were alone and then you were having an experience with them all alone and the second one is trusting their gut so they all agreed that solo travelers uh, after talking to them and gathering their questionnaires and answers we figured out that they're very confident all of them and they're ready for unexpected adventures they have to remain calm and be aware of both their physical and mental limits as well and the third and the last pattern that we noticed was learning how to be safe so while traveling solo especially females we have to be really careful and they say that they have their own back there are a number of ways to take precautions and they do serious prep work to assure their safety so they say that they have their own back we have to obviously research the safety and then trust your gut like they say and then uh, three more patterns of behaviors were there which is learning to entertain themselves even though they'll meet new people on the road as a solo traveler they spend lots of time on their own so even though you're traveling in a group you'll have to spend a, quite a lot of time alone so travelers go armed with ways to occupy their free time like for example do something you love take a book take a bath do some skin care anything considering a hostel Staying at a hostel with other solo travelers can not only give them a feeling of belonging or safety, it can also uh, open them up to other adventures, other experiences with new people who are becoming friends with you. And for the last one, relying on the kindness of strangers. It would be very unwise to befriend, befriend every passing traveler. Solo trips highlight how helpful and welcoming people can be all over the world, uh, language barriers or not. So you really have to go out of your comfort zone, push yourself and rely on the kindness of strangers. So here are some of the suggestions we would like to provide to the tourism industry of the Philippines. We came up with these suggestions after talking to our interviewees, our film, our travelers that we interviewed. So the first one is to provide valuable means of accommodation for solo travelers. In case number of tourist police, I'm sorry, increase the number of tourist police near tourist attractions. These are some of the suggestions that our interviewees also had said. And third one is tourism related infrastructure and services can also be expanded and further developed. So. If you think about the Philippines, we asked them, each of them, what their adventure, what their expectations were, and all of them said beaches and crystal clear waters, white sandy beaches, palm trees. So if you want 
uh, if the tour if the tourism industry of Philippines wants to thrive, they have to come up with tourism related infrastructures and services that can be expanded and utilize their beaches to the fullest they can. And the fourth one is to improve public transportation. So one of our interview with Sarah from the from the USA, she had said that when she visited Philippines, she had no idea that it would be hard to travel from one island to the other. So that was a really, that was a negative point for the Philippines. So they should improve their public transportation. And the last one we would suggest is to help in the preservation of the natural environment. Since, uh, since the Philippines, it promotes a really uh, idyllic, busy, beach life, beach tropical vibe, we would like to say that being sustainable would help the tourism industry of Philippines a lot and preserving the natural environment would also attract more travelers. As a conclusion, we'd like to say that the female solo travelers typically opt for adventure or nature-based trips. They do not go for the other types of uh, adventures. Almost all the interviews have traveled alone more than once. So five of the group of women that we interviewed, all of them have traveled alone more than once, almost all of them. The Philippines met their expectations and all five interviews really had a positive perception towards the trip to the Philippines. And many women are motivated to travel solo with the hope to achieve self-discovery and self-development. Most important advice given by all the interviews were just go for it. So we asked what their advice would be to a female solo traveler or a female that wants to travel solo for the first time. All of their responses were just go for it. Trust your gut and just do it. So thank you for watching our presentation and we hope that you also gain quite an insight to the life of a female solo traveler and thank you so much for this opportunity hope you enjoyed it